Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I trust everyone has been served well and, and well served. I don't, <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, continue eating, of course, but turn some time over to uh, the Honorable Glenn Elms, MP, the Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and Multicultural Affairs, to, to give us our address for this evening. Following that, we'll have uh, uh, an interfaith recognition award ceremony for two worthy recipients that we'd like to, that Minister Elm will be giving out to them. And I'll, I'll read the citations for those as, as he hands those out. Minister Elms, please come forward. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet uh, tonight uh, and pay my respects to elders, both past and present. Uh, if you think my voice is uh, just a, a little bit on the croaky side, can I firstly apologise? Um, I'm not feeling all that well, uh, but I certainly didn't want to uh, not make it along here tonight um, and uh, firstly acknowledge uh, just the enormous amount of work that Brian has done and his team uh, in organising this first uh, G20, well sorry, it'll be the last G20 event for this year, won't it? So, uh, and, um, and when I arrived I was expecting to see all the motorcades out the front and I I didn't see any of those, so, uh, so uh, this, is, this is the real work and the real people uh, who are getting together tonight. Uh, I was saying to Brian a moment ago, before I even look at my notes, so I was saying to Brian a moment ago that um, this, is the, this is the first of these gatherings. And uh, I hope, I really sincerely hope, uh, that next year when the, the other mob, the other lot, you know, the pollies, uh, meet in Istanbul, uh, that the second of these gatherings does take place. Um, and it's bigger uh, than this one. And it becomes, over the years, more and more, uh, not only stronger and bigger, but more powerful. Uh, and before too long, uh, when the television news media is sort of having their look at the, the, the various presidents and prime ministers and so forth uh, who are gathered uh, at the G20, uh, that pretty well uh, some equal time uh, is devoted to your gathering. Because it's all very well for politicians to stand up, and I know there's a few politicians in the room tonight, but it's all very well for politicians uh, to stand up and talk about targets, uh, talk about uh, you know, increasing and, and improving on the economy of the world and providing for jobs. And that's, they're easy things to say. But the whole community of every country has got to get behind those, uh, those promises and those aspirations. And it comes down to people uh, very much like the people in this room tonight. The people who, rec who represent the cultures and the faiths uh, of all of the countries right across the planet. Uh, and it's your work and it's your dedication and it's your influence in each and every one of your communities uh, that will enable uh, those goals to be met uh, by, the, uh, by the G20 leaders. So I think, um, thank you, I think the, the, uh, the future uh, for your organisation and this gathering is assured. And I certainly hope uh, and Brian has told me that there's going to be a little video presentation that's going to be done uh, of this. Well, I certainly intend to make sure, if he doesn't, uh, that our Prime Minister gets to see it. Certainly the Premier will. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that next year, uh, when uh, everyone goes to Turkey and to Istanbul, uh, that, uh, uh, that there is... Um, a, a very, very big spotlight that has shone uh, on this organisation and I thank you for what you've been doing um, over the last couple of days and for what you'll be doing tomorrow. So can I just, now I'll, I'll revert back to here. 
Uh, but, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, can I thank you uh, for coming along. Um, what has happened here over the last couple of days has brought together uh, scholars, lawyers, political leaders, people with faith, interfaith leaders from around the world uh, for these three days of very productive talks. Uh, this summit is showcase showcasing um, the academic, political and social contributions of various faith traditions and philosophies from around the world. Uh, when my department was approached by Brian, and uh, for those of you who know Brian well, when Brian approaches you, uh, far easier just to say yes first time around, uh, um, because he keeps on coming back and back and back. But, but when we were first approached, um, it was my pleasure to be able to join with the committee uh, and signing a memorandum of understanding uh, with uh, the Ministry for Culture, Youth and Community Development of the United Arab Emirates, uh, and the community develop and um, uh, which is headed uh, by Sheikh Niyan bin Mubarak at Niyan. How did I do? Was that pretty close? Good. <laughs> um, the agreement, ladies and gentlemen, reflects our serious attempt uh, to undertake a number of international, mutually beneficial activities, including the establishment as I said before, of an ongoing G20th Interfaith Secretariat. And I'm very proud that my department has been able to contribute uh, in some small way uh, towards uh, what is happening here over, the, over three days. Across the world, there is increasing recognition that faith and religion play a vital role in promoting peaceful and harmonious relationships within and between nations. Unfortunately, and this is what we'd like to change. Little is known about the many positive contributions that faiths and religions make to social well-being on policies that impact national and international communities. Religion is often misunderstood or overlooked as a factor around world events, but it has a major role to play from medical ethics to cross-border conflicts, macroeconomics. The G20 Interfaith Summit is an excellent opportunity to acknowledge and to contribute all of the faiths, all of the religions, to make our social well-being and also our national and international communities. I understand that this will be achieved by examining the link between religious freedom and economic development at local, national and international levels. It's very fitting, therefore, that everyone gets together for the first time, the first one uh, here uh, in what I believe uh, is just the most magnificent part of the world, but I know everyone here will have a different view on that, uh, but, uh, but a magnificent part of the world here uh, in culturally diverse Queensland. Australia's cultural and religious diversity uh, touches uh, every part of our great nation. Um, I often say when I'm in, uh, in uh, rooms like this, uh, modern day Queensland is a very different place uh, from the one I grew up in. 220 different cultures make up modern day Queensland. As many different languages are spoken in Queensland today. 100 different religious or belief systems are practised in Queensland today. Surely that makes us one of the most culturally diverse as states and communities uh, on the planet. It's evident since the time of the very first Australian census, which goes back to 1911, that migrants account for a very large percentage of Australia's population, including here in Queensland. Australia, as I said, is one of the most culturally diverse countries uh, in the world. About a quarter of Australia's population was born overseas. And I think in Queensland, uh, it's about 20% of the population born overseas. Another 20% of the population has at least one parent uh, who was born overseas. So our cultural and religious diversity is one of our state's greatest strengths. And it's also provided a very strong foundation for our future growth. Australia is a country of striking landscapes and a very, very rich ancient culture. 
It is one of the world's great immigration success stories, one of the world's strongest economic uh, economies. It's the fourth largest economy in Asia. It's the twelfth largest economy in the world. Australia's economic cultural success owes much to its contribution of its diverse people, from our First Nations people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, who can trace their culture back some 60,000 years, the longest continuous culture on the planet. Australians are well known for their cultural diversity, their compassion, their commitment to giving all people a fair go. Here in Queensland and indeed in Australia, we're so virtu very fortunate to live in a country that prides itself on freedom of religion as a crucial component to our democracy and community harmony. Faith plays an important part in the lives of so many of our culturally diverse communities. A culturally diverse community is one that is innovative. It is economically strong. It is socially vibrant. That is why we believe that all Australians, whatever their race, whatever their religion, should be able to live their lives with the assurance that they will be treated fairly as equals. Similar to the United Arab Emirates, Australia is another great example of how religious freedom can bring economic beliefs in our community. I'm a firm, very firm believer that cultural engagement and participation is integral to building our community capacity, prosperity and harmony. The Queensland Government is committed to supporting the continued growth and development of a strong multicultural community across the state. Here in Queensland, we are committed to strengthening our reputation as an inclusive, open and welcoming society. Our vision includes our striving to ensure that people from culturally diverse communities and backgrounds can contribute to and participate in Queensland's economic, social and cultural life. But we know that we can't become complacent. Across the world, these are very challenging times. Community anxiety about the threat of terrorism is high, and there is a danger of the world sliding into a divide or conflict. Now more than ever, though, we need events such as this summit, very important, this summit, that draws attention to a productive dialogue, that draws attention to all that's positive and unites us in the world. Though we may come from different religions and cultural backgrounds, there is far more that unites us than divides us. Like everything, though, it depends on choice and what we chose to focus on. What unites us, what divides us. For my point, I prefer to, camp, to uh, concentrate far more on what unites us. The essential message of all faiths is that we should love our neighbour as we love ourselves. That is contained within Islam, it is contained within Christianity, within Judaism, within Buddhism. It is something, again, that unites us. I acknowledge tonight your contribution, each and every one of you, as leaders in your community of faiths, leaders who individually represent the best ideals of each and every community represented here and collectively represents the best ideals of a truly culturally and religiously diverse world. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Brian Adams, Dr Brian Adams, the Director of the Centre for Interfaith and Cultural Dialogue at Griffith University and all the supporters, his great team, uh, who have put together this very inspirational gathering. I commend you all for your commitment to foster understanding, tolerance and goodwill. I really do welcome you to the Gold Coast, a very, very special part uh, of Queensland and of Australia, known across the world. I hope when you go home uh, that you will take home very fond memories um, of Queensland and of Australia. I hope when you go home um, and go back to your own communities uh, that um, we have in some way been able to set an example uh, of a community and a country, as we did show in the other G20 event, uh, that these things can be done, they can be done well, they can be done in peace, they can be done very well organised, uh, where the leaders get to have their say, 
where the protesters get to also to have their say, as is important in a free society. I think Australia has done itself, and Queensland has done itself, uh, very proud over the last few days. I know that what comes out of this conference uh, will be a very dynamic initiative. I'm looking forward to seeing the wrap-up of it. I'm looking forward to showing the video. Do you still call it a video? Uh, anyway, whatever it is, I'm looking forward to showing the MP3 or the video or whatever it is uh, around the place. Um, and, uh, and I really do look forward to speaking uh, over the coming 12 months with Brian and looking and, and hearing about uh, the plans that you put into place uh, for another great gathering at, uh, in Istanbul at the next G20 gathering. So thank you very much for coming along and thank you very much for your time.